So we have here uh, the two sample t tests. Put a dash between those. Two sample t tests. We need to know when to use this. When do we use the two sample t test? So when to use. When <laughs> data collected will be a quantitative Y and a categorical two level X. Uh, I think it's basically it. We often test to see if the difference between them is zero. OK. So what do we have going on right here? What does this all mean? A quantitative Y. Like we could test uh, the heights of people. We could test the heights of males and females, the heights of juniors versus seniors. We just have to pick two levels of the variable. So we have to do things like, let's test the heights of juniors in college versus seniors in college. Someone says, you know, I, I think seniors are actually taller than juniors. We'll do that right here. We're going to test the heights of juniors versus seniors. If you notice, we have two levels to a categorical variable. And then we have a quantitative Y, like height. So we need to collect data from both groups. And so the notation here is going to get a little bit interesting because it's going to be a lot of repeat notation. And so let's take a look at this right here. So we have our notation. Notation is going to be, let's start off with classic and we got n. But now it's not just n. We don't want to do just n. We want to do n1 and n2. So let's go into here and drop in notation n1, and we need n2. So n1 is sample size of group 1. That is n1, and then we have n2. That is going to be sample size of, you guessed it, you know what it's going to be, sample size of group 2. And we can use this. We can cheat. Watch this. Oh, I shouldn't. Wait, watch this. We're going to copy paste. We will also have S1 and S2. Because <laughs> now we need not a sample size of each group, but a sample standard deviation. And let's go right here. Sometimes you'll lose the cursor on these screens. Oh, no. There you are. Standard deviation. There we go. Standard deviation of group one, standard deviation of group two. And if we have, look at this, if we have sample sizes and we have sample standard deviations, we probably need, if you look what I'm going to go get, we need a sample mean. So if you look at that right there, we've got our sample mean. Let's go down here and put that notation just for us. It's very similar to the one sample means test, but now we're doing two sample means. And so we're going to go in here and we're going to grab these notations. We're just going to copy paste just to literally show these are the same concepts that we are doing. It's just slightly changing with what we have. Let's delete the S so it doesn't like that, so let's not do that. Let's go back in here to the insert. Let's go to equation and let's drop in our Y bar. There's the bar. We'll change in a moment here, but this is going to be the sample mean of two, of uh, group two. And this one right here is going to be the sample mean of group one. You're right. So we need to remove these standard deviations off the way. And we're almost done. We could probably, we got a little, I, I'll mention these as I go through. I'm trying to think what else we need. Degrees of freedom. Uh, DF uh, is degrees of freedom. Complicated formula. Uh, we'll use an applet to solve it. It's a complicated formula, and I'll go ahead and show it to you. So let me pull it up up here. Let me pull up the two sample degrees of freedom formula. Two sample degrees of freedom t test degrees of freedom formula. And let's pull a picture of it just so you can see what we're actually solving. And the formula we are solving is this nice. I think I can copy it. Let's copy image. And let's bring it down here so you can see it. You will not, 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 not be solving this. So let's bring it right into here. I should have it copied. Let's cross our fingers. The answer is, there it is right there. That is the formula that you're actually solving when you go to our site that lets you solve this. Oh my gosh, it took over the page. Go away. We don't want you here. 
So we will not be solving this. We will not be solving that equation. That could just be like, solve this equation on the test. We don't, that's not what we, we're not here to do. Um, if you notice, it's based on standard deviations. It's based on sample size. Um, this test right here uses a complicated formula. You will not be solving it. So do not worry about it. Uh, the degrees of freedom just tell you what T you are using. So you can see it again. What do you do with the degrees of freedom? You bring that over to your T applet. And in the T applet, you enter in the degrees of freedom. If the degrees of freedom are small, the T is smashed down. If the degrees of freedom get higher, the T rises up. Eventually, the T basically rises up into the normal curve, kind of. It technically takes infinite degrees of freedom. But after about 60, it's kind of similar, because watch this. If you remember the classic 68, 95, 99.7, 95, 95 with 60 degrees of freedom is a t-score of 2. 68 is a t-score of almost 1. 99.7 is not quite 3, so the curve gets a little different. That's why we don't always just use all the calculations. But look, 68 is basically one standard deviation, or standard error for this curve technically, and 95 is almost exactly two down to the decimals. But the reason is, as it gets more freedom, it'll get more normal. Lo notice the very small change when I go from 60 to 600, the curve will rise up a little bit more. Did you see it? See it go down, up, down. Watch it go way down, down, up, up, up. It's really hard to notice the small changes, and you might notice that the, Z, the T score, excuse me, is actually the Z score. That's why I got, I said it in my mind, that the T score right now is basically the Z score. And I say basically because there's additional decimals um, for the Z score we're not seeing um, and the T score because there's small decimal differences we don't see. The T never becomes the Z unless it has infinite degrees of freedom, but it becomes basically like the Z. So you can consider a lot of your T's to be basically Z's, but with small sample sizes, watch out. That's where you see your drastic differences. So anyone watching this in the future, if the sample size is really small, you'll see drastic differences between the T and the Z. The T is going to have more of a pushed out. It's going to be harder to reject and make wider confidence intervals. So the T is basically the normal, but it's more exact based on our uncertainty due to a smaller sample size and the standard deviations uh, in the calculations. William Gossett made some big impacts in statistics with that right there. So we got a little bit of a review right there. What are the degrees of freedom? And I'm thinking through everything we have in the equation, and I think we've got it. That's got it. So let's take a look. Now we need an example problem. Whew, got a lot of notation on this one. Example problem. How many people do we have watching? I'm wondering. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to look. The answer is, oh no, where's my watching people page? <laughs> The answer is four people watching. Yay, I'll take four. <laughs> okay, sorry, I interrupted the video for that. Okay, I just wanted to see. I was hoping there'd be at least a few. Okay, cool. So we have here an example problem. And I'm, I'm hoping these videos get used a lot for practice for the test. That's why I'm doing this. I'm going to do a few more like this to help people practice and see a few example problems. Because everyone's like, Brian, I want to see more problems. I want to see more problems. Well, you got it, more problems. So example problem. We go <laughs> and collect. 200 random UT students. 100 of the students, of these students, 100 are freshmen, sure, let's do freshmen, seniors. Freshmen and 100 are seniors. You do not have to have the same sample size, so let's not do that, I guess. Let's go 80 and let's go 120. I just don't want people to think you have to have the exact same sample size. It's easier to make the math that way, but it doesn't have to be. So what did I just give you right there? You notice I'm giving you N1 and N2. Um, and then let's say here, uh, seniors are normally distributed in their heights with a mean of uh, 70 inches. And eh, we're doing males and females, so let's do 68 inches. 68 inches and a standard deviation of four. Um, I guess we'll pretend it's normal. I'm going to say the problem is normal. And if you look at what we're going to do, we're going to cheat because we're going to copy paste this because we're basically writing the same thing but for freshmen. So freshmen are normally distributed with a mean height of 67.5. I'm going to make the standard deviations equal. And is there evidence 
that freshmen, oh, let's do that. Freshmen are shorter than seniors. If you notice what I've done today is I've done all the sidedness to the test. And I kind of want to put this um, all on its own page. So I'm going to make it a tiny bit tinier, tiny bit tinier. Cool. That's got it. So it's all on its own page. Is there evidence that freshmen are shorter? I think that's grammarly correct. Is there evidence that freshmen are shorter than seniors? OK, we got to grab our four ways to do the test. Got to go back, 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 back to our four ways to do the test. And let's go right here, grab those four steps. We reviewed those at the start. Let's bring it all the way back down here. Let's drop in those four steps, and we got it. Here we go. Write that null, write that alternative. Let's do it. For this null and alternative, we are testing the difference between the two means. So we need to write a null here that states that the true difference between the means is equal to 0. We're going to see if freshmen are shorter than seniors. So let's think about that. That's going to be a minus. Let's check it out. The null states that the true difference between freshmen's means and seniors means. Does everyone see I've written the null states that the true difference between freshman means and seniors means is equal to zero. The alternative states that the true difference between freshman's means and seniors means is less than zero. Actually, and I reversed it. Let me change this. I'm going to go back in time here because I actually want it to be the negative sign and that would actually be positive. The way I want to write it is the following. We're going to put here mu senior and I'll explain why. Mu senior minus mu freshman is equal to zero. And we're going to put the alternative states that mu senior minus mu freshman is less than zero. There we go. I'd have to reverse my sign, and I'll explain what's going on right here. If you think about the mathematics on this, the mathematics would state that if you had something like freshmen are, oh my gosh, I am reversing the signs. I'm sorry, guys. It's later in the day. You know, you should always go with your first answer. Let me double think about this. <laughs> mu freshman minus mu senior. If seniors are taller, it'll be negative, correct. There we go. It's very easy to reverse these. There we go. Also, mathematically, I want you to think about this. Here's another way to check that you did it correctly. Flip the sides of it, put seniors on the other side, and you could actually write this technically mu freshman less than mu senior. So this is another way of writing it right here. You could technically write these the following way. They are mathematically equal. They just don't follow the same structure. So if you do get confused like I just did, if you're doing a problem on the fly, you might look, does it make sense the way I've written it? Does everyone see kind of how I can transpose it to say the mean of freshmen is less than the mean of seniors? And that's where I have mu freshman minus mu senior is less than zero. So I double guessed myself, and I was correct the first time just going off of the way of doing it. When we take that difference, it would be negative. If you also want one last check, are you like, I don't know. I'm still thinking, did I get it right? Go here and put in a number like, let's do it. Let's put in 60, and let's put in 70. 60 minus 70 would be less than 0. That would lead to evidence. So if we're testing to see this, we'd want to see a negative difference right here, which is kind of where our problem is set up. And I think, I don't know if we'll find a difference. This one might be an interesting t-score. We'll have to see what the standard error is. So we got all this right here. And let's give it a shot. Let's click over here on our text button and put in new text. The four conditions, and we're not going to focus so much on conditions today. We're going to focus on more about doing the mathematics. Conditions are more written portions of the task, but you should always check conditions. They're majorly important. I'm not downplaying conditions, but the conditions are random. We took a random sample. 10%, we take less than 10% of all UT students. Condition three, nearly normal. The, the test stated, or my question stated, that all both, both, both distributions were normal. So the distributions of the means for them should be nearly normal. Number four is what? There's a fourth condition for independent means. And the condition is the means are independent. So you have to ask yourself, do you think seniors' heights influence freshmen heights? And the answer is no. Seniors' heights, like it's not like seniors are tall and freshmen are like, ooh, seniors are tall, we should be tall too. These are independent means. It's a non-paired test. So with the independent means, we can say that we meet the independent means. That Seniors' heights is not dependent on freshman heights or vice versa. So these are independent means. So now we just have to calculate the t. Well, here's what I'm going to do. 
This t is very similar to the last problem I wrote. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this equation right here and use it to solve out this t equation. We're going to augment it, and you're going to see how similar it is. So what we need at the top of this is we need now y bar 1 minus y bar 2. Can I take these? It never lets me copy paste between these. There it goes. y bar 1 minus y bar 2. What's interesting, in truth, if we were to look at this the way it's primarily written, and we'll put down here degrees of freedom because that's the complicated form for the degrees of freedom, and we need a 2 on that y bar. So the top of this equation right now is the difference between the two sample means. In truth, this is the observed, observed difference. So this is actually the first thing you're calculating here. This is what we observe. So if you've been watching the other videos, this is what we observe, and that is what we expect. We expect the difference to be 0, and that's what we're testing against. If you notice that value I have up there, that is the hypothesized value, and that's what always goes over here in this spot. You can see that in all the other tests I've been doing, the hypothesized value goes right here. And since we hypothesize the difference is 0, according to null, we said, I believe the difference is 0. So since we believe the difference is 0, that goes here. Now, you don't have to write that because you're just subtracting 0, but just theoretically or kind of how it works, that's what you're doing. You can use other values as a null value. So in other tests, you can use a different value. So let's put in our remainder, which is the standard error of the difference between the means. So maybe we'll write a side note down here that this is the standard error of the difference between the sample means. And let's add it in. We're almost done. Got almost all the spots we need on this. Oh no, we jumped out of the thing. Is that not? Oh, I think I just have to put it in the thing. Let's do the thing. No! Okay. We got to do it the hard way. All right. Let's put this. Let's go here. No, don't do that. Oh, really? I have to do it here? Oh, well, I should have done that. And then let's go here. Let's grab the whole thing. Let's square root it. And then let's go to this one. Let's put in an exponent. And let's put in an exponent. Oh, we need the double. This one needs double, and this one needs double. You might think about what we're going to be putting in here. You don't have to memorize these equations. These equations will be given to you on all of our tests. So what do we have right here? If you look at the similarities between what I just had pasted, it is going to be s1 squared over n1, s2 squared. I should have put that squared in when I had a chance, or 2, <laughs> over n. Wait, don't go there. Go there. n2. There we go. It's basically s over square root of n, but it has with it uh, the kind of grouping of the two. So we have both standard deviations and both sample sizes right here. We're kind of adding them together. But you can't just square stuff because s squared and n squared, because it was n square root to begin with, we can't just square it since we're adding them up we're going to unsquare root them after we're done. So we're basically putting the two standard deviations together, or excuse me, standard errors. And what do we get? This is actually right here. Let's make it very clear that this is the standard error. This bottom of this equation, I'm going to circle it. This thing right here, that is the standard error of y bar 1 minus y bar 2. Can't write today. That is the standard error of y bar 1 minus y bar 2. That's subscript right there, but that whole thing is just the standard error of y bar 1 minus y bar 2. You might see that in jump output saying standard error of the difference between the two means because y bar 1 minus y bar 2 is the difference between the two means. And that's got the equation. From here, it's just solving mathematics. Look at this. We are almost done with another example. Problem? Yes. And I hope, I hope this helps a lot of people out. Remember, you can always email me and request videos, bs at utk.edu, bstevens at utk.edu. Either one of those works. Email with questions or video ideas. Let's put in both of these right here and give it a shot. OK. Woo! Got a lot to fill out. I think I can kind of remember a lot of these answers for what we put in. Um, we have here the difference between the two means. We're doing freshman minus senior. So we're going to knock off this 0 to begin with, because that 0 doesn't matter. And then we're going to go here, and we are going to put in sample mean 1 is equal to, this is the freshman's mean was 67.5, and sample mean 2 
is equal to 68. That's a difference of 0.5 on the top or negative 0.5. Then the standard deviation on the bottom, I think they were both four. And it doesn't matter. Well, I guess, did we sample more freshmen or seniors? How many freshmen? I think we got 80. In truth, it won't matter because the standard deviations are the same. But you know, it's nice to keep your notation nice and neat. And then this is sample size two, which should be our sample of seniors. This is the standard deviation. Oh, and I lost. Oh, there's the square. We need the square. So we will have to add in a new notation here, just so we can see the mathematics as we've done this. Please try to solve these out on your own. Um, just very good practice to solve these all and know that you can do these on the test. So that's 4 squared, and that's 4 squared, which is 16. And man, if I'd kept those standard deviations the same, that would have been easier to do. And so let's take a look. Uh, we sampled 120 freshmen, so this right here should be 120. And this right here should be 80, technically. We're just going to make sure we have this technically correct. The mathematics would still work out the same because we had the same two, like 4 squared over 120 plus, 4 squared over 180, over 80. Same mathematics, it would have worked out the same way. So it wouldn't have caused a problem. But now it's just technically correct with the sample size of freshmen underneath the freshman mean, which is 67.5. So let's continue on. We need to solve for this t statistic, which I'm going to do the mathematics for. And let's do it. 67.5 minus 68. The top of the equation, if you can't see it, is negative 0.5. The bottom of the equation is going to be the fun part. Well, it's 16 divided by 120. That is that. We're going to copy that for the moment. Then 16 divided by 80, which is 0.2. So then we add these two. Really? Oh, that's so cool. It's 1 third. And then when we square root 1 third, bada bing, bada boom, we get that right there. That's a weird one. So when we square root 1 third, we get this right here. So if we square that, we should get 1 third. Bring it back, square it, square root. Don't worry about that. Just so you can see what happened, um, this equation right here, let's just reduce it down a little bit further. Just so you can see, it's 16. Over here, this is 16. And the top of the equation solves out to negative 0.50. That's because I subtracted those numbers. And then the bottom of this equation right now, when we solved it down here, turned out to be square root of 0.333. And all we're doing is just reducing this down so you can see the mathematics I went through. Make sure to rewind the video or rewatch just to see how I solved this. And once we get this, we've now square rooted that. Hopefully, I've been solving everything correctly. And if you look, you can tell the t-score. It's going to be close to about negative 0.87 or something. So all we're going to do is take this number right here. Let's make it very clear. And that number, I don't have it in the paste. Oh my gosh, I do have it in the paste. There we go. So we're going to divide these two numbers to get the t-score. And the t-score is going to be negative because our difference was negative. So the top part, if it's negative. So all we're going to do is take this. What did I say? Negative 0.87. Divide by, and it's negative 0.866. I didn't add in the negative. We'll just remember to add that in now. Negative 0 0.866. And was it rounded up or rounded down? Because I was so close. Hey, it's 0 0.87. It is. Yeah, if you round it. Wow, well, just look at that. If you round it up, it does that. OK, so we have our t-score. <coughs> we are so close. We are so close to being done. Well, we can draw this out again. Here's the thing. This T is more complicated. We need to find the degrees of freedom for it. So we're going to head over to Charlie Quick to help us out. So what we'll do is we'll go here and we will Google two sample, not down there, we'll Google it, two sample degrees of freedom calculator. It's actually the second one now. It used to be the first, but this is the one we generally use. I checked out the other one. I still like ours better. If you look, all we do is we enter in sample size of group one, which was 120, sample size of group two, which was 80, Four and four, and I'm going to guess the degrees of freedom are 194, 169. There we go, right there. Um, it is a complicated formula, but can't get them all right. So we're going to take those degrees of freedom, bring them all the way back to here, and put them in. And we basically have the normal curve again, basically. But we need to use the t-curve. It's more exact. That's why we use it in statistics, because it takes into account the sample size and standard deviations for this one right here. So if you notice, my t-statistic was negative 0. Point, oh, I want to draw it first, 866. And we do a left tail. I didn't draw this one out first, but I could have. 
Just think about how, and I want you to practice this. I want you to practice drawing these. Because what would I do back here on my cheat sheet? I need to draw the alternative. Well, let's do it. What I do is I draw what looks like a t-curve. And t-curve basically looks normal. Then I go here and I put, I put my number line a little bit better. And then I go here to 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Go up 1, 2, 3. Then I plot where I landed. I landed at a t-score of negative 0 0.866. Now how do I plot my p-value? To the left. Why in the world am I plotting to the left of that? Why in the world am I plotting to the left? The reason I'm plotting to the left is because the alternative is the less than alternative. If you notice the direction of the sign, the alternative is the less than alternative. And from here, it's downhill. We just need to now write out our, our, our decision. Guess what? My p-value is high, so I do not reject the null. My p-value is, and let's look back what it was. We'll put it on our curve 2 here that we drew. 0.196. If you notice, that's the same curve as this right here. Basically identical. Not identical, perfect, but close enough. Um, so the p-value here, so p-value is equal to um, 0.196, telling us the probability of a result as extreme or lower than what we saw in our sample would occur about 19.6% of the time, given that there is no difference between the means. So this seems likely, given the null is true. If you also notice, although this is not a Z, it's kind of similar. That below here would be 16%. That's because of the empirical rule. Um, we would have 68% between here and here. So it's 68% between. That would leave 32% on the outside. And so we basically have something a little bigger than 16% with that p-value of 19.6. So our p-value is a little bigger than what we could estimate via the empirical rule. We'd say it's probably a little bigger than 16, but it has to be less than 50. Lots of great practice on knowing how to reject or not to reject without using the applets. Pretty much it's easy to tell that that is a very large p-value. So my p-value is 0 0.196 which is larger than alpha of 0.05. That's the general alpha we assume. Because of this, sure, fix it. <laughs> we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. We do not have evidence that there is a difference between the, sam the true mean, excuse me, true mean of freshman and senior heights. That's it. We do not have evidence of a difference. We don't reject the null. I continue to believe that they could be the same height. So on average, it looks like we would believe that freshmen and seniors are about the same height. We do not reject the null. We did not have evidence for that alternative.